Hi there, my name is Jay Lepore with CompuMatter and also with ServerMatter. And the purpose of this video is for you to be able to use MySQL as your authentication instead of the user dash mapping XML file. Um, so it's just going to uh, allow for some additional security measures and just make it easier to add and remove users using the built-in guacamole interface as opposed to hand coding it in a file. And so this is what that process is. So from our own recorded knowledge wiki, um, we want you to start off with creating a list of variables that look something like this. If you're going to create a bash script, that's a perfect place to start. Uh, you can also directly enter these on the command line one at a time and it will save them at least during your session, your SSH session, um, and you can use them further on as these one at a in these one at a time scripts. Okay, job one, you're going to make the temporary directory that's going to hold a lot of our install files. So you see we've identified that here. You're going to run this wget command, which is going to get the uh, jdbc file, uh, which is a driver that communicates with the database. And it's going to, in, in the back end of this, extract it and strip the parent directory of that extraction and put it in the temporary directory. So I know that's quite a lot going on in a single line, but just run it and, uh, and it'll put things where they need to be. Uh, of course, you're going to already have to have a variable defined here. In our case, we're using 1.5.2. Next, we're going to copy the MySQL jar file that got extracted during all of this. And here it is right here. We're going to copy it from the temp directory, MySQL, the guac version, all of that right there is going to direct get you to that jar file and it's going to be copied to the extensions folder in etc. guacamole. Assuming that's where you installed etc. guacamole, we do have a guacamole path right here. I think I'll go ahead and change that while I'm at it. And that's where that'll be going. Next, we're going to download and install the MySQL connector J file. This was particularly difficult to track down. Uh, there are different repos, and I've had some that work, some that didn't work. What version does it need to be? Uh, I'm running Ubuntu 22.04. <clears throat> this definitely works for that. Uh, type in the command wget uh, dash capital P, the directory you want to put that file in. Uh, you've got here the temp directory from above and then the URL to the file itself. That will put the DEB file in your temp directory. Then you've got to run the dpackage command in order to install it. And uh, you can see the temp directory and a path to that Debian that will install the file. Now we've got to create a database that holds the guacamole data. And we'll do that with this command. And of course we're using the MySQL variables from above and the guac database name. And um, we're now going to import a schema. So during the course of extracting that file earlier, it's created a MySQL directory, a schema directory, and this file which builds everything on the fly. And so just run that command, MySQL, the username, password, the name of the database, which we're pulling from the above variables, and the path to the schema file. Next thing we're going to do is create a MySQL user that Guacamole can use whenever it wants to access its own database. And so you're going to use, of course, the uh, administrator MySQL username and password to create that user on this database, and that user is uh, identified by the guacdb name and the guacdb password that you have put in your variables file and then guacamole will have a user to do its work. Now we have to create the guacamole admin the web administrator user so that's a different thing. Now you know you're going to go to a login page when it's all said and done and you've got to be able to log in. Well you need a user added in advance in MySQL that's going to uh, occupy the role of an administrator so that this administrator can add other users, um, add connections, i.e. physical machines that you want to be able to access, 
and um, it's all done with this one. You, it starts with this one single user. And so I've laid out a bash script here for you. Uh, I won't go into it in too much detail, but you because you can read it line by line. We start off with uh, hashing the password, get a salt on the password, and um, the, the getting the current uh, date. All of this has to go into, these actually are inserted in that form within the database, so that's why we're doing that up front. And then we're going to insert into the guacamole entity table, this line, into the guacamole user table, this information, um, and then we grant user all system permissions here. And you can read that in detail and understand it better. Um, beyond that, we have the, um, this, this one here is only going to apply if you want this user to be an administrator. Now, I know that's a little confusing because I said that's what we were doing, and it is. And that's what this will do, and we need to do it because we need to have at least one administrator. But if you want to create a regular user, let's say after you've created this administrator, you can run this same script, just omit this section, and they'll be added as a regular user. They can't add other users but you can assign connections to them if you want to use the same script. And then finally, you want to flush privileges so that, that information gets applied. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do here is insert these values into the guacamole properties file um, because it's going to look for this information. If it's there, it's going to use it and in place of the user mapping XML file. That'll be bypassed altogether, and this is what will be used. There's an administrator already in there, so you'll be in business. And that's it. That's how you add MySQL to the guacamole world, and at that point, you'll be able to log into the back end and add additional users and connections and all the things that you would do if you didn't have MySQL, except you don't have to manually enter anything into a file. And um, if you are so inclined, like the video, consider subscribing. In any case, I hope you get something out of this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.